What's going on there folks? Good evening. It is the Earthmaster back here on this Wednesday night, uh, May 3rd, 2023. Uh, it is about 6.08 p.m. here along the west coast in the state of California. And latest quake looks like a uh, 2.1 into the region of Turkey. Seeing some uh, further aftershock activity there. Also got a swarm of earthquake activity here around New Zealand kicking up. So... Let's go ahead and jump right into the New Zealand activity as we back out of the states there. Uh, well, according to the USGS, not a whole lot going on. But, hey, we'll have to go to a, a different agency. But they are reporting 14.7 within the last hour. Uh, there is quite a bit of earthquake activity being reported here around the North Island, New Zealand area uh, from the GeoNet servers. So let's go ahead and check it out here real quick. As we head over to GeoNet, see what's shaking out there into the New Zealand area. Looks like quite a few threes kicking up here around the Taupo Super Volcano. Let's go ahead and zoom in here just a little bit and see what we have. A couple earthquakes being reported here uh, around that Super Volcano. Also some uh, newer movement quakes around the, uh, the eastern coast here, the eastern side of the North Island uh, with uh, looks like a 2.9 but for the most part looks like a lot of the activity is at the Taupo Super Volcano so let's go check out the uh, volcano drums this will give us a better view of what's shaking out there and there's quite a bit shaking this is a uh, this is the Taupo Super Volcano with many other volcano seismograph stations there uh, positioned around the area but looks like this swarm is directly at the Taupo Super Volcano, and you can see some of those threes coming in there. It looks like it may be starting a swarm. It's been a little while uh, since we've had an earthquake swarm here. Last one uh, was a couple months back now. I think it's been over two or three months, somewhere around there. Uh, boy, this year's just flying by. It's already May, but it uh, looks like uh, in the last eight hours or so, definitely seen a, a pretty good uptick in earthquake activity um, at about. Well, looks like the majority of these uh, earthquakes being reported around the Taupo supervolcano are at a depth of about four to five kilometers below the surface. Uh, with the latest one here about two hours ago, 3.4. But uh, looking at the graph there on the volcanic drum, looks like there's a little bit more smaller earthquake activity being reported. Uh, this is just the week and above. We've got to include all magnitudes and that will probably um, show quite a bit more around the Taupo Super Volcano. Here's this little swarm. It does look like it's on the southwestern edge here, um, away from our previous swarm. If you remember, the previous swarm was just right underneath the lake here, Lake Taupo. This one looks like it's positioned a little bit more further um, away from the center of the lake down here. Uh, is that Tarangi? Tarangi? Hopefully I pronounced that correctly. If I didn't, um, send me an email. <laughs> so yeah, pretty good cluster of earthquakes there, folks. So we'll continue to watch that. That is showing up there on the Earthquake 3D Globe. And uh, the majority of that's being reported by the GeoNet servers, but also the EMSC does report on what the GeoNet servers report. So it is showing up on the Globe, which is good. Uh, a lot of activity kicking up there, it looks like, uh, for now. See if we got anything else uh, kicking up around the area of the New Zealand region. Let's go down this list here and see what we got. A couple deleted events for New Zealand. Uh, some smaller quakes there being reported around Taupo Super Volcano. Of course, that's good uh, for them to report it. Not really see anything major blasting off here. There's that 3.4 two hours ago. Taupo. 3.0. So it looks like for now most of the activity is confined there to the uh, to that volcano. With a little bit of adjustment up here along the Kermadec Trench uh, with that 4.7 coming in just about an hour ago. 10 kilometers deep. So heightened movement it looks like down here across the area. Be on guard. Uh, also got an earthquake here outside of Manila. Around the Philippines here, 5.4 coming in. Um, within the last hour, 16 kilometers deep, relatively shallow. It is in a uh, zone that sees quite a bit of earthquake activity historically, as you can see here on this map. 
uh, showing uh, earthquake movement. What else we got here? I know we had a super deep earthquake here around the Himalayas. Um, doesn't look like USGS is showing it. There's uh, 4.6 over here uh, north around the India area at this uh, plate boundary, this bend. But I know I've seen a deep, look at that deep quake right there. This is what I'm kind of talking about. 4.0. This is being reported by the EMSC model, EMSC csem.org site, the Europe, uh, European model. 4.0, uh, 632 kilometers deep. Now this is provided by the Germany uh, folks there. Source parameters provided by uh, these folks. So, um, no guarantee if this is um, you know a legit earthquake or not, but if it is, it certainly is deep. USGS not picking up on that, uh, and I don't believe the EMSC models are either. Um, let me see here. Yeah, actually they were. Um, about an hour and 23 minutes ago, there's that 4.0, 632 kilometers deep. So, well, these are the. this is the one that's reporting it, right? Definitely. Not for sure what I was thinking there for a second. I was thinking the USGS, but hey, it's already not, definitely not showing up here on the map. All right, let's move on across the area. Tajikistan, Tajikistan, Eastern Afghanistan, all seeing quite a bit of deep earthquake movement here over the last 24 hours. Uh, that's continuing today, it looks like. It did halt a little bit there around early in the morning, 333 in the morning. Woohoo! And uh, of course, Turkey seeing quite a bit of movement as well here, some fours. Latest one, a 4.9. Looks like 10 o'clock this morning. Um, let's see what else we have across the area. Relatively calm conditions here. Not a whole lot as we head towards the Mediterranean. The Atlantic Ocean not shown much either. Uh, let me check the USGS map here. Not a whole lot happening across that area. All right, uh, further down south into the South America region couple smaller quakes there also a 5.3 off into the southeast pacific rise here that's going to be this earthquake uh, from earlier this afternoon looks like things uh, kicking up there slightly across the states let's see what we have going on here if we got any new movement uh, yellowstone a little bit of activity up there let's double check that real quick and see what we have going on doesn't look like Yellowstone wants to work again. So I am not going to mess around with that station. I'm just going to go over here to the... Um, uh, let's see, where is it? University of Utah. There we go. Let's give us an overview here of Yellowstone. See what's going on across one of the seismographs. This will definitely give us a good indicator of uh, any earthquake activity. And it doesn't look like there's a lot, uh, some very small microquake movement uh, in relation to that station, but uh, that's about it. All right, Pacific Northwest, a little spotty activity here through the Cascades. Not a whole lot happening there in Northern California. Um, a quick glance here at the trimmer map. Bring up the Cascadia trimmer right now. Shows zero epicenters once again. Uh, day number two with zero epicenters. All right, across Northern California, as mentioned, not a whole lot going on. A little bit of activity here along the creeping segment of the San Andreas Fault. And also some activity here around the uh, China Lake region. Most of this activity came to a halt this morning about 7 o'clock or so, with the latest one being a 0.9. Uh, down south here in our swarming area, a little slight uptick here across uh, a couple of the swarming regions. Not much, though. Uh, looks like they're reporting um, about 10 earthquakes. The latest one, a 1 1.6 down here, about 4 o'clock or so my time into that swarming area. And uh, I just want to double check the seismograph stations as we've been doing uh, because they, it looks like they've been active, but uh, not a whole lot of reporting on them. So uh, it's going to be the station right here, the El Centro station. And the most recent imagery, well, only goes back here uh, like half an hour. So we're going to have to go check out the... Um, previous one which is going to be uh, I believe this one right here and 
and it still, to me, it still looks like there's earthquake activity out there, folks. I mean, I'm, I haven't got a hold of anybody yet in regards to this, um, but to me, it looks like earthquake activity. I don't think this is outside interference, like far as machinery running or traffic driving by or a train. It just, to me, it kind of looks like some earthquake activity. So, just kind of watching that, uh, seeing how uh, it's being reported. But there is a slight uptick here, you know, as, as noted across these three little areas, kind of forming an upside down triangle in a way. Uh, also some activity further north along the San Jacinto fault zone, mostly uh, some smaller quakes, but there's a 2.9 in there from earlier this afternoon, 16 kilometers deep. The uh, sleeping giant remains calm for now. That's the San Andreas vault, the plate boundary. All right, uh, let's see what else we got. Alaska region. I'm getting a little swarm here into the Cook Inlet area, right around the uh, around this volcano. Let's see what we got. 105 kilometers for one of those. Oh, that's way over here. Yeah, mostly shallow earthquake activity. It looks like, or combination of really deep and shallow. Uh, let me check out the hazard notification system there with regard to that volcano that's going to be on this one right here see if there's any updated information here from the alaskan volcano observatory i don't see anything so this is just uh, maybe some small microquake activity really nothing too concerning at the moment also over here around uh, the trident volcano westward seeing a little bit of activity as well there's that uh, earthquake from earlier this morning a 4.0 into the aleutian trench Got the uh, Kuro Kamachaka Trench over here showing slight activity, not much. It looks like uh, one earthquake from today, 4.8, 53 kilometers deep up here into the northern end of the Kuro Kamachaka. All right, the uh, Hawaii area, latest one shows a 1.8 here around the Kilauea Volcano. Don't think we've seen any major adjustments there, but let's check out the HVO here. Kilauea Daily Update that was put out today currently not erupting uh, there is slight seismicity elevated here at the volcano uh, looks like the instruments in the summit region are tracking gradual inflationary tilt at this time uh, no significant changes have been observed observed at either of the volcanoes rift zones over the past day so things are uh, still kind of neutral continue to watch that though all right space weather activity getting uh, kind of active out here on the space weather side of things had a whole bunch of inflares last night in fact five of them uh, we counted those earlier this morning in the update had five inflares with an m7.1 being the or m7.2 excuse me from 3293 being the largest basically a back-to-back -back rapid type of event with no massive cme uh just it's a little angry there for a little while and that's from 3293 uh, there is a massive amount of sunspots here looking uh, let, let me bring up the uh, most recent image here is this the most recent image hold on a second here so for some reason this this one looks older hold on a second those are you guys see what I see do you see what I see? Right? Isn't there a cool Christmas song? Um, do you see what I see? Um, I'm just looking at this imagery here, folks. And this image right here, it's supposed to be the most recent one. I don't know. It, to me, it kind of looks like it's off. It looks like this is an older one compared to the one that's over, over here. So not for sure what's going on with that. And then again, maybe not. I don't know. It's been a long day. Either way, this is center disc right here. And we, when we go over to the other one here, it, uh, well, I guess it's center disc as well. Okay. All right. <laughs> Woo. Good one. All right. Uh, moving on. So 3293, the one that's producing all those inflares last night, still looks pretty complex, fairly complex with a um, an adjoining sunspot here that also looks complex. So this whole area looks very unstable as a combo uh, also 3297 one of the newer sunspots back here on the eastern side of the sun remain a credible threat as well with that type of setup uh, 3294 
Looks like it may be growing slightly. Also a couple other newer sunspots here in the mix as well. Uh, these regional sunspots that are departing are, that's it, they're just departing. Uh, so we'll continue to watch, you know, numerous ones here across, uh, coming across the eastern limb of the sun here in the coming days for some elevated flare activity. Uh, I think there could be a possibility of X flare potential there as well. Uh, looks like they have raised the X flare probability up to 15% chance. M flare at 55 and C flare remains elevated, of course, at 99 because we are kind of cracking and popping with uh, a bunch of C flares right now. Uh, so we'll definitely continue to watch that uh, activity. No major coronal holes facing us. It doesn't look like any major uh, CMEs have been produced. So therefore, the aurora forecast remains minimal at best. Uh, but again, there's hope of that changing as the sunspots uh, numerous sunspots. If you have a solar telescope here, uh, these are easily visible in a large region. Uh, so this is very active, a little bit more active than what we've seen here in a little while. All right, folks, have yourself a good night. I'm going to jump off here. Got a few things I got to do here. Um, make sure you guys subscribe while you're here. And uh, if you want to help us out, grow here on the channel and also be entered into the member drawing every single month where we give away uh, prizes, then please consider being a member here on this channel. Uh, I think we're up to about 70 members right now. There's three different levels. You don't have to join the top one to be entered into the drawing. Uh, the top one uh, is basically a channel supporter or channel. Um, oh, I can't remember what I named it, but it's basically a, a sponsor. Yeah, if you want to help donate more to the channel. Uh, in regards to uh, helping this channel grow. That's the elevated member level, but we have a lower one. I think it's uh, $2.99 or $3.99 a month. I can't remember exactly, uh, but there's many perks behind that, extra videos um, and whatnot. Uh, and of course, entered into the uh, monthly drawing every, every single month. All right, folks, have a good one. We'll catch you guys back here sometime tomorrow. Till then, stay safe and uh, be prepared out there.